Hi, I'm Jill Roberts, and we're here with Making Artists and Stories, and today I am here with... Uh, Peter Janopoulos. And Anna Janopoulos. And your business is... Uh, Papa Spiro's Olive Oil. Which is where I wanted to start. Papa Spiro's refers to your... Is it your great-grandfather? Uh, my grandfather. So tell me how... Because you're three generations... So I'll tell you... If, Four generations. Four generations. Yeah, with my kids being five generations oh. now. <laughs> so tell me how, the, it's a neat story of how you came up with the name and how you got into the whole olive oil thing. Basically, my grandfather was, loved his uh, olive trees in Greece. He would go down there every year and he would pick it, press it, and he would send the olive oil to us so we could eat as a family. But there was always so much extra olive oil every year. that, And olive oil is not like wine that uh, it's, uh, doesn't age well. Okay. So at the end of the time, we would just get rid of it, or we, we, we eat like two, three-year-old olive oil, which is not very good. So that gave me the whole idea of selling the Papa Spiro's extra virgin olive oil, too, for everybody to try and sharing our experience with everybody. So you said you started as a hobby. As a hobby, about six years ago. Okay. I was kind of bored at the restaurant. I, uh, at the time, I was working at Brushmill by the Waterfall. I had owned it, and during the mornings... I started just researching how to bottle and everything and all the cleaning uh, to go through the bottles and everything. And I decided to just start bottling it and just sell it out of the restaurants. Uh, we also own Nick's Place in Madison. The customers were crazy about it. They loved it. And from there, I was able to get a little money. Uh, like I said, all the money that I made, I put right into the business. And it just kept growing. And then I was introduced to farmer's markets. So I decided uh, to try one. It was, the first one we were, it was Lime Farmer's Market. Okay. And we went over there and we killed it. It was uh, amazing. People loved it. Good reviews. I also have three little ones that <laughs> three keep, little ones. keep us busy all which, the time. <laughs> which can I say when I see them, they are the best behaved three kids. They <laughs> yes. come to you to the markets and they are so, they're, they're, this is a family, it's, it's a family affair. We grew up like that, that we always worked with them being kids and yes we they help us and they try to sell and we actually try to start their own little business so they can uh, they want to make money so <laughs> it, we, we like to start them young like that and it's by choice and they love it too and hopefully one day they could take over yeah our business and we could retire how, in Greece <laughs> how do you balance it all kids motherhood and, and being parents a lot of sacrifices and, yeah because yeah. <laughs> Correct. How, your kids are how, how old are they Nine, seven, and uh, four years old. And they they come with you to. They'll probably be at the shop too. And yes, they'll when be you... in the shop, and yeah. uh, they help out. They love putting the stickers on the labels and everything, so that they help us out like that. And they, they want their ten dollars, <laughs> so they put it in their piggy bank. And, uh, <laughs> they're they're saving up for a computer. So our oldest one loves computers. So the olives. That was interesting about your story. Your your you actually will harvest annually. Olives yes, so green. olive season harvest is between November and January. We actually pick our olives green. You get more nutrients and a better quality olive oil. You get less olive oil, but it's a better olive oil. Okay. We're going for the quality, not the quantity. Okay. Uh, a lot of the farmers wait until January. Think of like a ripe fruit. It gets juicier, so they'll make more money off the weight. Right. Uh, not as good, though. The, you lose the health uh, benefits and everything when you wait longer. Okay. But November, we go down there, we pick it. My father is usually the one that goes down and he organizes it. He hires my uncles and cousins and they help out. And I saw on the website you lay stuff under the tree right, to kind of catch yeah. the out, right? So basically you take a tree and uh, there's a few methods that we do. Uh, there's this machine that basically knocks the olives off the branches. Okay. Uh, then the other method is somebody goes in the tree. We, so we basically prune the trees as well at the yes, same time. Yep. So they'll cut the branches that off, and there's a machine that we put it through, and we pull it out, and it separates the leaves and the olives. And that's another way of filling up the sacks. So basically, the point is we fill up the sacks. At the end of the day, we bring it to the village uh, press. Okay. And we tell them we're bringing our olives today. We bring it there, and they start pressing it. So at this point, they drop it through a machine, they wash all the olives. Okay. And then it goes to the the press. So it's basically, it starts pressing for an hour. And the key word is cold press. So it needs to be at no point, because you're using machines now. It's okay. not your old school stone and donkey <laughs> so, walking around. 
But uh, there's all temperature gauge in there. So if it gets too hot, it's the press slows down. So they, at no point, it should be over a certain temperature. Okay. Because then you, you ruin uh, the, the olive oil. Okay. Uh, from there, it goes through this other machine that separates basically the water and the oil. So, uh, and you can see the water separating one side and the oil separating on the other side. Right. And then they go into filling up with containers that we send over here. So it's, it's all bottled in Greece and then sent back then here. Then sent back over here. Yep. Okay. So basically when it gets sent over here, we go pick it up from uh, New York. In addition to the harvest time, do you, do you go back? Most of the time we go to the summertime, we'll tend to, we'll do uh, some weed whacking of the fields and everything, clean up the fields. Honest families in Greece, so we like to go visit them and everything. Okay. So summertime usually, and then a little vacation, a little beach time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I'm sure it's great for your kids to, yes. to... And to learn the language and everything. Were your families in the same area no. of Greece? No. No, it was four hours away. How many olive oil trees take to, to at least give you the, what you need right now for your olive oil? We have about 500 okay. trees. So I'm actually at the point that I'm buying my cousins. So... My great grandfather, he was uh, he had seven kids, so all the land got split up uh, when he passed away. Okay. So I'm at the point I'm buying my cousin's olive oil right now because we're just, we're, uh, but they they do the same process. We right. Do, and it's the same land. It's literally same next land. to each other and everything. So you mentioned that because you harvest them earlier, it does get less olive oil. So like just how many olives would it take to, to, to make oil for this size bottle, for instance? Uh, I want to say you, you get about one-tenth of the weight of the olive oil to olive uh, from olives to olive oil. So from the time that you're harvesting off the trees to the time, how long, how long of a process is that? You said it's about a week to, to do all that? Uh, to do all our trees is a week, but from the time it comes off the tree to the olive oil, within 24 hours it needs to happen. And then what's the shelf life of the... So the shelf life is two years. Oh, okay. But and it's considered, it goes rancid. So it's, it's still edible, but the, the terminology is rancid. Okay. Does it matter how you store olive oil? So olive oil should be in a cold, dark space. So it doesn't like heat and it doesn't like sun. That's so okay. hence you put it in green bottles. That's why. You don't want to put okay. it in clear bottles. Okay. But you go to the store and some they're in plastic green bottles, uh, white bottles, clear bottles. Right. And then from the olive oil, we also make the food products over here. Yeah, show uh, me yeah, show me what you have here. So we are, over here we got uh, red pepper hummus, which we roast the, the, the peppers ourselves. Okay. Roasted beet hummus, which that's our newest product that I love the color of it and, and everything. It's great, yes. But same concept, we, we roast our own beets, and from there we use the chickpeas and make the uh, hummus. Okay. Our basic uh, classic hummus. The next one is, you can pronounce the name on the... Uh, Melizano Salata with a Greek pronunciation. <laughs> with a Greek pronunciation. <laughs> so it's basically, it's uh, almost like baba ganoush, so it's eggplant. Uh, okay. So baba ganoush is a little more smoother. Okay. Where that is a little more chunkier. So you could, you could eat it as a dip, or you could put it on a steak. Uh, it goes very well. Uh, and then the last one would be baklava. Yep. Uh, the neat thing about that, instead of butter, which is traditional to use butter, yes. we spray the, each sheet with olive oil. So technically a little healthier than uh, using it, butter, but you still get that amazing crisp in the color. on. Uh, oh, yeah. And also in baklava, I use the thyme honey which, uh, from Crete okay. in the syrup. So it gives extra taste. Because we might... The, Tell me how the baklava again. What's the the lay? It's a lot of layers, right? With the with pastry. What else is in it? Uh, it's Be a walnuts. Okay. And then it's a cinnamon. We use some spices for aroma. And in the end, after we bake it, we put it syrup, uh, sugar syrup on top with a thyme honey in it. And, and then, then tell me what this is. So that is a spanakopita, spinach pie stuffed with spinach and feta. Okay. But the cool thing about that is that. Anna makes the phyllo dough from scratch. I hand roll the phyllo dough, and uh, then I fill it with uh, spinach and feta and some of the leeks, onions. I sell in frozen. Right, and then they and then your customer would bake it. And they bake correct? it off. But a very okay. old tradition that nobody does anymore. Right. I mean, even in Greece, it's very hard to find somebody that hand rolls the phyllo dough. And how did you learn? How that was? I learned from my ma mother. 
Okay. But it needs a lot of skill or practice to get right. Right. Yeah. yeah. No. As a chef, I, I can do it. You can, yeah. Yeah. Do you enjoy it? I don't have the patience oh, yeah, for it. Yeah, I enjoy it. I love it. I make with them my love. But would you serve this as an appetizer? Or would you serve it as a, as as a, a main, dinner, as a dinner? As a lunch. Yeah. Okay. Or appetizer as well. Do you serve this room temperature or would you serve it warm? It's like I typically. Like it. I like it. Even. So it's like, oh, you can it's different it hot. You can take it out of the refrigerator. And it's a different the... room temperature and then it's different okay. when it's cold. Tzatziki, it's a Greek yogurt with uh, cucumber and dill inside. And you usually you eat on the gyro meat. Have okay. you, do you know gyro? We call y we say gyro in Greece. Okay. But here you can saw, you can hear it as a gyro, or some people they know as like the Greek word gyro. Okay. So that would be used as like a dip. You can use it as a dip, or you can use it as a dressing in the salads. It's many ways. Like it's like goes with every kind of meat. So you brought with you today this really fantastic looking charcuterie board did i say that correct okay. <laughs> do you give tips to people when they come and buy your products do you offer them how they could use them or do you find that a lot of people are asking but a lot of people do ask what they serve what they could do serve. and that's definitely a option and a lot of people do during the holidays we're buying the dips to make uh, charcuterie boards sourcing local do you use local stuff for your products uh for the most part if it's available we, we do get and Usually it comes from the farmers markets, uh, from the vendors. So you've we'll, you've made a lot of connections through oh the, yeah. through the farmers markets. So for the most part, if we could get uh, peppers, beets, uh, basil for pesto, we'll make. Uh, we'll right. we'll buy them from the market. So how long have you two been doing this together? Well, we're together for ten years. The the day we opened the business, basically, we've been doing it together. And you do a lot of the baking, right? Yeah. I'm the only one. <laughs> <laughs> well, that changed. Change yeah, she's become the you number know. one salesperson, <laughs> too. I, I trained her, and it got to the point that she outselled me, and we decided she goes to the markets, and I, I watch the kids. <laughs> well, you, that will change when you move into um, your new building? You think you'll get employees right away, or are you going to keep it a small? Uh, for the most part, we're going to keep it just the two of us, and okay. we'll see how it goes. And what's going to happen with Nick's? Nick's, uh, my father's still there. He's still working. Okay, okay. <laughs> he, he's born into the, he doesn't know what to do if he ever stops working. <laughs> so and I'm he, sure he uses he, your olive oil. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Which good. is why um, when I had my restaurant in Brush Mill, we were always voted best steakhouse. Um, we were voted best diner in Madison. And one of the secrets is we is because we use the olive oil. Do you think you'll miss that aspect of the restaurant life? I think it'll be a little bittersweet. Yes, I will miss it, but I, I, I also I think I would enjoy the so more time with the family so and everything. We're so exciting about that. <laughs> did you expect it? No, I did not expect it. It was more of just make extra few dollars and Saturday afternoon enjoy my the fresh air outside instead of being in a hot kitchen. Anna's the one actually pushed me to share. It was her idea to let's do more and more and more markets and we noticed that we were making more money than I was making it. the restaurant with less hours and everything. So okay, right. I said, Anna, I think it's time that we, we should take the jump. <laughs> From there, we started uh, branching out. We started making uh, cosmetics a little bit, a uh, body moisturizer. That's when Anna started uh, giving me ideas too to expand the business uh, because you branched out, you're more than just olive oil. So we also have uh, Cretian sea salt and wild mountain oregano. We have uh, other products as uh, cosmetics, uh, body scrub, and we make with uh, two our, of our ingredients. Uh, one is our olive oil and the other one is sea salt from uh, the cliffs. So my brother lives in one of the biggest islands in Greece called Crete, and he goes by himself can pick the sea salt right from the cliffs, and wow. then he send it over to me. So it's 100% pure, natural uh, sea salt. Wow. With all the minerals. Basically, my brother-in-law goes up in, on the mountains and picks wild oregano. It's, and it's like the craziest, awesome flavor that it's not your regular oregano that you grow at your house or something. But That's fantastic. And uh, the sea salt, he actually, he'll take a little dinghy and go on the side of the cliffs and... So basically, there's no tides in Greece like we have over here in the sound. So basically, their tide is come springtime, 
the water drops and just leaves pools of water, they dry up with the sun and become sea salt. So if you open your, you got yeah, your, sure. you got your flakiness of the. Oh, look at that. It's shiny. Uh, so it's he so just, crystally. He, he sends it to me it and uh, we package it. So you're really bringing your heritage of Greece back here. Basically, to, I mean, to... the way we would eat in Greece They're... or at our house, that's what we want to, everybody to experience. Are there any other herbs that you that you offer besides the oregano? We do savory. He goes and pick up the savory also and the thyme, but he he brought us a small amount of them. Yeah, depending so, on the season. Uh, so this year, oregano was good. The thyme and the savory was uh, it didn't get that much. Oh, and I imagine that using all these ingredients, you're the products that you make using the, the salt and the oregano, they have to have such a unique flavor. Yeah. So a lot of people ask me, what, why is this so good? Oh, right. And I go, the secret is the olive oil or the salt that we use. Right. Excellent. Excellent. And you have a great website, popospyrosoliveoil.com. You mentioned before the benefits, the health benefits of olive oil. Elaborate on that a bit more. Uh, I think it, here's my nutrition. <laughs> <laughs> so the benefits of olive oil is uh, antioxidants. Uh, it's also anti-inflammatory. Um, helps to reduce the cholesterol of your of your blood and has um, vitamin E. It's good for the skin and also has calcium too. Okay. And being a pure, real extra virgin olive oil, you get those benefits where your store bought, is a lot of them are fake olive oil and they mix other stuff in the olive oil. So you don't know what you're buying. Yeah, tell me the difference because I know the cold, the first you mentioned the cold press. How is that different? Because is not all olive oil cold press? Olive oil is not regulated in the United States. We don't uh, bled with any other oils. Our olive oil comes right from our trees, olive trees to the bottle. And the good thing is we let the trees grow by themselves. So it's organic olive oil. We don't spray our olive trees Yeah, we, we're, we're actually in the, the process chemicals. of getting the organic label. But it takes okay. five years to uh, show proof of what we use, the organic fertilizers and stuff. Okay. Thank you for bringing a little of your heritage to Wallingford. You are a, sh a chef by, you started. By trade, yeah. Uh, by I trade. went to the Culinary Institute of America. Okay. I uh, graduated uh, back in 05. Okay. Uh, from there, I owned a steakhouse, uh, Brushmo by the Waterfall. Okay. I had that about uh, 12 years. And then I've worked at my father's restaurant for the last 25 years. From 10 years old, I've been doing cashier, busing tables, and cooking with my grandfather. My grandfather was, uh, so I'm third generation chef on top of it. Right, right. My grandfather had immigrated here back in the 50s. He used to work in the Taft, uh, Taft Hotel in New Haven. Okay. So he used to train with the Culinary Institute of America students when it was back in New Haven. And then uh, he just went from a dishwasher and worked his way up as a chef. And then uh, my father and uh, him bought a Nick's place back in the 86 which I basically grew up in that place. Yeah. <laughs> and now you're ready to make the leap full time. Yes, to do so, so you back have... in January, we, we bought a building in Brantford, and we're in the process of just taking the olive oil full time. I'll be, May 1st will be my last day at working at the restaurant, and we'll be doing this full time. And in addition to selling your own products, you said you're also going to be offering products from other markets, markets of businesses in, the, in Connecticut. Business plan is to buy people's other vendors we do all the markets that all around the state yeah. and we know a lot of vendors so yeah. our plan is just buy their stuff wholesale and be able to sell in our store that so everybody can just enjoy what we enjoy when we go to the markets when we trade off our all stuff the fresh food, <laughs> yes that's fantastic so it is located in Brantford, uh, 78 north main street uh right across the street from staples uh off exit 54 or 95. Do you think you'll branch out with product when you're in your own place? So yes, definitely. I'm on uh, prepared foods, soups, and salad dressings. Basically, whatever you could think of made with olive oil, I so would like it, to make. Uh, it'll be a place you go in and you can, it'll be t to go. You'll take to go stuff. You'll also um, offer frozen. Frozen, fro mostly cold food though. I mean, it's something that needs to be reheated. Okay. And our other concept would be delivering the food right to your house. Okay. So that's our uh, 
another thing that we would like to branch out as. And so now you're, you said you're in the permitting process of getting the building together yes. in Brantford. That's challenging is because that you've never done anything like that before. Um, not to this extent. I mean, for the most part, our buildings were always a kitchen and ready and it was just the okay from the health of the department. But now I'm starting from zero. So I'm just doing whatever the town's telling me to do. Learning so. a lot along the way. Yes, a lot, which is good because it's always uh, learning for the future. Could you buy food to eat once in there, or this is just uh, going to no, be No, it'll be just a retail store. Will you off offer different products throughout the year? Uh, definitely, depending on the availability of the uh, vegetables and everything. Uh, okay. We're very busy holiday season with the olive oil as gifts and everything. No, the markets have been great to us. I, I, don't, I wouldn't see us. Maybe cut down a little bit, but yeah. not totally. Yeah. And it's fun. It's You're outside and enjoying the fresh air and enjoying people. It's not getting stuck in a four wall building and <laughs> right. Get you out. Get yes, you outside. exactly. So I, I I wouldn't plan to stop doing the markets. Okay. What's been the most challenging part of this this journey for you? I think juggling work, this business, and life. I would say would be the most challenging for me. Where what have you learned? Learned. Uh, always have time for family. Yeah. Family's important, Part right? Family is important. So, which is why we're making this jump. Uh, yep. Yeah. Where do you hope to see your business in five years? Five years. Definitely the store running. Hopefully, uh, 10 years we could retire and go to Greece <laughs> go and to pick Greece. the owls. <laughs> and I wish you the best of luck with your, with your new building in Brantford. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Excellent. Well, thank you. Thank you both. Thank you for having Thank us. Thank you for having <laughs> us.